Hey, welcome to Proven's Garage. Today we're going to open up a bunch of party boxes and put them in there. And then next time we're going to put that in there. So let's check it out. Well, back from hot tanking. This motor looks fantastic. I mean, it's like brand new. Got some new cam bearings put in because they had to take those out when they hot tank it. And I just figured go ahead and have them put the new ones in. That way I can't screw them up. <laughs> but even the paint on the side of the block, the factory paint looks fantastic. I'm just really excited with how this turned out. So as you can see, I've already got the crank in. Um, I went ahead and checked the clearances on all these journal bearings and they are all perfect. Uh, I did do brand new uh, bearings in there as well, so I was a little nervous that, you know, they might be a little, a little too tight or a little too loose in some places, but everything looked great. So that's awesome. I am going to do ARP studs. I decided on that just recently. I figured putting ARP and everything else, might as well do it on the bottom end. Um, but these are in here for now, torqued down, and then once the ARP studs come, I'm just going to take these out, put the ARPs in, torque them to spec, call it a day. While I was at the shop, I also got the crank polished. It did, really didn't look that bad, but figured it was only like 60 bucks, and I was like, yeah, just, just go ahead and do it. One less thing that I can even possibly worry about. So, let's have a look at all the stuff that's going in this puppy. Well... We got a table covered in party boxes, and this is mostly the stuff that I'm going to try to get installed in this episode, which will pretty much get that motor ready to rip. So, I got a new melling oil pump, because factory works fine, but melling is the best, and oil pressure is kind of your best friend. Also got a double roller, timing chain, and gear set. Um, don't really need to do double roller, but it was the same price as single roller, so why not? Got some Trunnion upgrade kits for the rockers, which I talked about in the last episode. We'll get those installed at some point. Stage 3 turbo cam from Summit. Gonna make some potatoes. Got a Melang cam plate to hold that puppy in. ARP head studs to keep those heads locked down under lots of boost. We got LS7 lifters and lifter guides or trays. And then the real meat and potatoes here is the Forged Pro LS pistons and rods from Summit. These things are rated for 1200 horsepower. And you know, ratings are always a little low. They got a safety factor, so I'm gonna shoot for 1250. I like to party. So, anyway, I'm pretty excited about all this stuff, so let's start getting it in. So the old timing chain gear came off pretty well. This actually is what drives the oil pump as well. It's an integrated unit. Um, I did have to modify my three jaw puller a little bit. I had to grind down the tops because I couldn't get behind the gear, but that shouldn't really change any strength in the puller and it worked great to come off. The new design for the double roller chain has a whole bunch of different increments that you can set to change the timing of your cam. I'm not gonna mess with that. You got a zero right there. If you leave it at zero, that's just stock. And the nice thing about these is they don't need to be pressed on, they just slide on there. And then you have a separate piece for your oil pump, which also just slides right on. So that's pretty nice.
All right, assembling the rods to the pistons, are, it's pretty easy. Um, but one thing to note, if you get these Pro LS rods, these bolts come fully torqued. <laughs> so they're on there pretty tight. Definitely was a little bit of a challenge to get off. Just trying to be extra careful. Anyway, we want to coat everything up with some assembly lube. There's different kinds. I just use this stuff. We're going to start by putting some on our piston pin here. You want to make sure everything is ultra clean. You don't want to be getting any debris in here. I'm going to put some in the bearing in here in the connecting rod. And I already have a clip on the one side of the piston pin. Now I guess put the other one in. These things can be a little tricky sometimes, but this type isn't too hard. A little trickier with assembly lube all over your fingers, but we'll make it. There we go. Just wanna make sure that's fully clicked in. I'm gonna double check these a couple times as I'm putting this stuff together. All right, so now I'm gonna put some new bearings in these connecting rods. So again, more assembly lube. There's only one way these can go on, so you can't really screw it up. There's a little tab in there, and there isn't on the other side, so pretty easy. Now we're going to put one in our cap as well. All right. And then the last thing is there are some numbers on the cap and the rod and there isn't on the other side so you want the numbers to go together you'll see that as you take them apart but if you forgot now you know all right i'm gonna get the rest of these buttoned up and then we're gonna put the pistons in oh yeah one more thing don't forget to keep your pistons all in the same order as you gapped your rings okay piston assembly Fairly straightforward. One thing to note though is the connecting rods have a larger chamfer on one side than the other, and you need to make sure that, that chamfer is pointing to the chamfer on the crank. So basically the counterweight, and then you have the main connecting rod journal. Well, the counterweight connected to that has a little bit of a chamfer, so you need to make sure your large chamfer is facing that. And also that if you have valve cuts, valve reliefs in here, those have to be facing towards the intake. So, three things to keep in mind. Lube, keep it clean, and lube. So we're gonna lube this puppy up. All right, and then one other thing to note is where your piston ring openings are. I like them to be at opposite sides. So after you lube it, they'll probably have moved around a little bit. Just make them completely opposite facing. And you want to do that with your oil retainer rings too. Just make sure that they're on opposite sides. Let me just stick this puppy in here. Getting it as straight as you can by eye, you can always adjust it a little bit later. And there are definitely better spring compressor tools than this. These things kind of suck but they do work. So I just get that over all the rings, make sure I'm pressing down on it, flat against the, the deck of the block, and you crank her down. Can't remember if you lubed anything? Lube. Making sure it's still pressed down nice and tight, we're just gonna lightly tap on the top of this. piston shouldn't slide out. If it does, your bores are shot. <laughs> In case you haven't caught on, more loop. Make sure your cap's going the right way again. And then to start, I just get these finger tight so the caps won't fall off. And then once all the pistons are in, I'll go through and do the torquing sequence. So I'll see you then. Alright, so once you got your 
last coating of lube on these bolts. We can get them all tightened up and you want to make sure that you have torque these to 30 foot pounds, then 60 foot pounds, and then a final torque of 95. <laughs> I'm gonna install the oil pump. This is a Melling oil pump. It's like the best. You don't wanna skimp on your oil pump. But since I did a double roller chain, I have to put these spacers in behind it. And this one is an oil passage, so I gotta coat this with some, you either coat it with RTV or some copper gasket spray. So I'm gonna spray this up with some copper gasket spray, and I'm gonna install that. So I finally started doing the trunnion upgrades in my rocker arms and uh, the reason I've been putting it off is because it's something that doesn't need to happen early on in the motor building process and it's you know kind of monotonous and tedious because you got to do the same thing 16 times but it's really not too bad so here's one of the ones I upgraded already you can see the uh, the new bushing style bearings in there and then here's one of the original ones which still has the needle bearings in it. And one thing you'll notice is that there's a pretty good amount of play back and forth in these. And that's how they all are. And I don't know if that's like a accounting for thermal expansion or what, but I'm putting these in so there is almost zero side to side play, but it still moves very freely. Now that's not accounting for a lot of thermal expansion, but I don't think it's going to be a problem and I definitely don't want to have valve noise. But I'll show you how to pop them out and I'll show you how to put the new ones in. So we just take a socket for the bottom and you'll see there's two sides here. This side has these little flats that stick off and the other one doesn't. So you basically want to find a socket that'll fit on this outer lip so that this center piece is able to push through and fall into the socket. And going on the flat side with that makes it a little more stable. And then for the top side, you want to press down with something that's smaller than this outer ridge. And there's a little like tapered edge here. There's a little fillet on this edge. So I find an 11 millimeter socket sits pretty flat on the top and isn't going to want to roll off the sides. It's pretty straightforward. Get everything lined up and you just press it out. Now there's a few different setups we have to use to take these out and then put the new ones in. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. I recommend just taking all of them out, getting into your next setup, doing all of them for the next step, and then setting up your new setup and doing all of them again for the last one. It's just easier. And there you can see all the needle bearings fell out. So those are what we don't want going into our motor. When these things fail, these caps can wear out. You can see this one already has some rust in it. And so these will wear out and then these needle bearings will just go through your motor. All right, so step two, we got our cleaned out rocker here and we're gonna take one of these bearings and if you look, you can see there's a little chamfer on the edges and some of them have a little bit bigger of a chamfer on one side than the other. For this one, it's this side. It really doesn't matter too much, but I like to put that side facing down a little bit more of a chamfer will make it a little easier to find its way in straight. And with this, we're just going to press it down until the press comes down flush with the top of the rocker. All right, so for this part, I have a 17 millimeter socket for the bottom. And this is big enough that it contacts the outer edge of the actual rocker itself, but also contacts that bushing that we just put in. So when we press down, this will hold everything in place. And for the top one, I've got a 5 8 bushing, and this is large enough that it'll fit over that center piece and make contact with just the bushing. And then when I press it in, it will also go in just a little bit further than totally flush with the side of the rocker. And so in the instructions, it says, 
get both sides totally flush with the outer face of the rocker, but that leaves a little bit of play in there. And I don't really like that. I don't want to have noisy rockers. So I'm going to push mine in until there's almost no play, but they still rotate freely. And if it's a problem, you know, I'll take it, take it apart later, but I like things to be precise. So we're going to press this in and you might feel it hang up a little bit right there. So now I'm going to back it up just a little bit and then just make sure that my socket is centered over this thing so it can slide over that center piece that's going to stick through a little bit. So I'll push it down until it's just flush with the top. Back it up a little bit. We're going to check our play. And there is almost no play. This is honestly the first one that I did where I nailed it on the first try. All right, and then the final step is we just have some little clips that go on the outside, some snap rings. So you got to have the right size snap ring pliers. They're pretty small. You can probably get them on another way, but it'll be annoying. So then you can see there's a little groove in there and we just snap this puppy on. There we go. The thing is ready for some horse puppies. Kind of got ahead of myself and uh, buttoned this thing up, but it's nothing crazy. It's just putting some covers on. Um, I got the turbo headers on there just to mock them up. Now they can go on upside down as well, and that'll allow me to fit the truck accessories. But I don't know if I'm going to use those yet. I kind of like them coming out the bottom. Kind of looks like a rock'em sock'em robot. Um, for right now, I do have the, it's actually a Gen 4 intake manifold on there, but I am going to be changing that out. Should have that in the next episode. But I'm pretty damn excited. And now I'm about to rip this old 2.2 out of here and start getting it ready to slap this puppy in. Make some big power. Well, thanks for stopping by. This thing's going to make a lot of power. I'm pretty excited. And then next time it's going in there. So thanks for watching. Damn, she's sexy.